Hey there, and welcome back to Reveal Truth. Prepare yourselves for another mind-boggling story. Grab a drink and let's begin. Sometimes you never really know how you're going to react until the situation actually happens. I always read where everyone seems to have the answers, but yet they are on opposite sides of the subject. I grew up in a broken home. Mom and dad argued all the time and one day dad walked out on us. I was nine at the time and I really didn't understand it all. I had an older brother and sister, but they were now out of the house. He was 21 and she was 19, and they were both in college at the time. They are both now married and live in other states. I might only see them during a holiday or if they visit while well on vacation. They're not very close to mom since she got remarried. As best as I can understand it I was what you call a love child. I was born when my parents were hoping to save their marriage at the time. I guess it went alright for a while, but their bickering and arguing started all over again. I think the straw that broke the camel's back was dad found out mom had cheated on him. She said it was because he cheated on her first, years ago. This crap went on and on till mom blurted out one time that I might not even be dad's son. I know it was because it all was said in the heat of the argument, but dad ended up having a DNA test done. He and mom were both shocked when it came back that dad was not my biological father. Dad started divorce proceedings the next day at 9am. He was the only dad I ever knew. He worked all the time and we weren't all that close, but now there was no one. After the divorce I talked to him once in a while, but it wasn't the same anymore. When I asked mom who my father was, she said she wasn't sure. She always thought it was dad. Life was hard for me after that. As I grew up I later learned that mom was somewhat of a party woman. She married young and had my brother and sister, both before she was 21. She started going out with some of the women she worked with. Dad traveled a lot since he was a truck driver. So I know they both constantly cheated on one another. After the divorce mom didn't remarry until I was 18, but she did bring a number of men to the house. Usually it was when I was gone to my friends or at my grandparents' home. They never spent the night when I was home. I became a voyeur, watching my mother having sex with other men. She never caught me but it went on for years. I never told anyone but kept it to myself. I know a lot of incest readers will wonder if I ever did anything with mom. The truth is no, I never really wanted to. I always thought of it as wrong, but it didn't stop me from watching. She gave me, shall I say, a liberal education. That leads to when I got married. I was 22 at the time and met Marianne. She was a secretary in the lumberyard where I worked. I asked her out and we became friends and then lovers very quickly. We were married within the year. She was always the flirty type, but I always thought it was just part of her personality. She seemed to be friends with everyone. She was 20 when I met her and said she was a virgin. To be honest, I never knew for sure then, but now I know the real story. Our life was what I would have called normal. We went to the movies, visited friends and relatives, ate out about half the time. Sometimes Marianne would cook meals for us at home. It was usually macaroni and cheese or something else that was easy to make. Lots of heat and served dinners. I didn't mind, we both worked and I knew she wasn't much of a cook when we dated. When we went out with friends I always wondered about Marianne having sex with other men. I know it was because of the way my mother was. I didn't want to think that way but it was lodged into my mind. I never told Mary Ann about my mother other than she dated. The last thing I would have told my wife was that I was a peeping Tom and watched my mother have sex with a number of men. Our sex life I would have considered normal. We had sex in a number of positions, and Mary Ann liked when I gave her oral. She stopped doing it to me when I came in her mouth one day. I had drunk a little too much and couldn't hold back. She gagged and choked and said never again. She jerked me off and even kissed my cock but wouldn't suck it anymore. The reason we got married was because she got pregnant. When she told me I asked her to marry me. I felt it was the right thing to do. I liked her a lot and figured I could grow to love her. Her family hated me from the start. I guess it began because they blamed me for not using protection and getting their daughter pregnant. In their eyes Marianne could do no wrong. I was fighting an uphill battle from the start. The only one in her family that liked me was her sister Kathy. She was two years younger than Marianne. She was a lot more quiet and kept to herself where Marianne was outgoing. I guess I always had a thing for Kathy because she was the only one in the family that talked to me. In her fifth month of pregnancy Marianne lost the baby. That was two years ago. We've been married for almost three years now. I've asked her if she has ever been with another man and she always tells me she hasn't. During our lovemaking I've asked her if she ever thought about it and she told me she doesn't need another man. I was more than enough for her. I was young and stupid and really didn't know much about life. When I graduated my mom's new husband told me it was time for me to be out on my own. I found a cheap apartment, found a job at the lumberyard, and had a pretty good life going. 
I dated a few girls because like most young men I was a pussyhound. Mary Ann went to a junior college in our town, and after graduating started working as a secretary or lumberyard. Needless to say young, good-looking women was always a nice sight. We dated and by the third date began having sex. She was born and raised in Steubenville, Ohio, which was about 40 miles away. She would go home some weekends to see her family. When they met me they really didn't care for me. I later found out that Mary Ann used to date a guy named Rob, whom her parents loved. I guess he was a football star when they were in high school. Mary Ann broke up with him when she was going away to college. He got a job in the steel mill where his dad worked. I guess they made pretty good money, and since Rob's dad was in management, he could be on a fast track to a promotion. I later learned from Kathy that Rob got pissed and quickly married one of Mary Ann's friends, Sheila. They now have two kids of their own. Sheila and Mary Ann don't get along anymore. That's why Mary Ann stayed in our town after her graduation. She roomed with an aunt till we got married. I don't know her aunt all that well. We got married at the courthouse. Her parents didn't even attend. Her sister Kathy did show up as well as her aunt. Since the loss of the baby Marianne and her parents have made up. I rarely visited them but enjoyed when Kathy comes to see us. I guess I shouldn't feel this way but I do. Marianne had made a lot of friends in our town. Some are people we work with and others are our neighbors. I know she has gone out with her friends but they are all married and to the best of my knowledge she hasn't been unfaithful. She has told me that she has danced with other men if the girls went to a lounge but that was all she ever did. A few times she had come home pretty horny, and the sex was great, especially if she had too much to drink. I honestly believe she was faithful to me. That was until we went out of town to her cousin's wedding. It was only 40 miles away in Steubenville, the city where she grew up and graduated from high school. She introduced me to so many people that it was almost like a high school reunion as well as a wedding. We both drank quite a bit, seeing we were staying in the motel where the reception was being held. I told her I wouldn't stay at her parents' house. They hardly even talked to me at the wedding. The trouble started when a lot of her old friends wanted to dance with her. I couldn't say much since her female cousins and friends asked me to dance as well. I held them close but didn't get inappropriate with any of them. I couldn't say the same about Marianne. She was outright flirting, which she does when she drinks. Her cousin said she was always like that but was harmless. I did enjoy dancing with Kathy, she was just one of those people I enjoyed being around. I made sure I didn't do anything inappropriate with her, but did like holding her in my arms. I did tell her I didn't approve of the way Marianne was acting. She didn't say anything about it, but I don't think she cared for the way Marianne was acting either. I told Marianne when I danced a slow dance with her, that I didn't approve of what she was doing, and she just called me an old party pooper, and said she would dance with who she wanted and the way she wanted. After that I wasn't doing much dancing, but a lot of drinking and watching Marianne being groped over and over again. She would rub her ass against a guy and then looked at me and laugh. I never laughed back. There were basically three guys that she was dancing the most with inappropriately. Two were old high school friends, and the other was just a friend of theirs. I've never seen her quite this wild before. I went up to her again and told her to cut this shit out or we would be leaving. She told me she was having fun and if I wanted to leave then just leave. She wasn't going anywhere. I went over by the back wall, kind of out of the way, and watched her. I was getting more and more pissed. It was getting late and some of the partygoers were starting to leave. I figured it was finally over and I could get over it. I went to the restroom and took a needed piss. When I came back out Marianne was gone. I looked all over for her and even asked a couple of her cousins if they had seen her. I saw two of the guys that were with her earlier. One was her old schoolmate. They said Rob took her up to her room. She was drunk and quite out of it. They laughed, but I didn't think it was funny as I headed up to her room. When I walked in she wasn't there. I was worried that he had taken her to his room instead. I had no idea which one it might have been. Our room was on the third floor. I went down to the front desk and asked what room her friends were in. I found out they were on the first floor facing the pool. So they had two door entrances. I walked down the hall and saw the two guys I had talked to getting ready to enter the room. They must have all been rooming together. They looked back at me and laughed as they entered the room. I went down the hall and heard a woman's voice. I knew it was Marianne. I banged on the door and one of the guys opened it. I could immediately see Marianne on her knees, lying across the bed with her ass in the air. This Rob guy had his cock buried in her. What the fuck? I yelled. Marianne was so into being fucked I don't think she even heard me. This guy Tony told me that she came in willingly and I could either watch or leave. He reminded me that there was three of them and only one of me, and if I caused any trouble I would be getting my ass kicked. Tony also had a knife. He was right. 
One on one I could hold my own with any one of them, but three together I didn't stand a chance. I heard Mary Ann ask Rob who came into the room. He told her it was Tony and Ben. My god Rob, they can see my pussy. He laughed and said, they're going to do more than just see you. Ben has wanted you for years and I told him and Tony that they could have a taste of your pussy. After all you've been rubbing your ass and teasing them all night. Mary Ann didn't say anything as Ben helped Rob take off take off the rest of her clothes and turn her over. Tony stood next to me to make sure I didn't cause any trouble. He held a knife to my throat. I stayed there and sat on a chair out of the way as one after the other they fucked her and she was begging them for more. I honestly don't know why I didn't at least try to put a stop to this, knife or no knife. I guess it was because of my past voyeurism or because Marianne was asking to be fucked. When Tony realized I wasn't going to put up a fight he joined the others. I sat there like the wimp I was. Tony had just finished fucking her and came hard in her. Damn. She's one good white piece of ass. Said Tony. I didn't mention it before, but Tony was a light-skinned black man. I would guess he was of mixed race. Marianne sat up and that's when she saw me for the first time. Oh my god. Jim, what are you doing here? She yelled out. Watching a lying whore of a wife getting fucked. Don't go telling me you were being forced. I heard you asking for more. I yelled at her. I'm sorry Jim. I had too much to drink. Tony, Ben, please let me up. This was a big mistake. I need to go talk with my husband. She must have sobered up a little. I have to tell you that when I used to watch my mother having sex, it was somewhat of a turn on, but watching my wife fucking other men made me want to puke. I didn't even have the start of a hard on. No way you're going anywhere, sweetie, till we're through with you, replied Ben. No, look, you have to let me go. My marriage depends on it, said Marianne. Your marriage is over, I said to Marianne. I look over at the guys and told them Marianne gives great head and likes it when you come in her mouth. I knew she hated it. I stood up as Rob put his cock in Mary Ann's pussy, and one of the other guys grabbed her tits. They looked back at me and laughed and called me a wee cuckled asshole. I shook my head and walked out the door, they were right. I went up to my room and packed my things. I knew my marriage to Mary Ann was over. My problem now was I was made a cuckold, and these fuckers made me one. I knew deep down that I had to get even with them at any cost. I couldn't go through life letting these assholes do this to me. I knew one at a time I could take them. I just had to bite my time and do my best not to get caught. I packed my luggage and even though I had drunk a lot I headed for home. I figured when they got through with Marianne she would go up to her room and sleep it off. She had enough friends and relatives that lived nearby that she would find a way home. At 10 the next morning the phone rang. It was Marianne. Jim, how could you just leave me there? I can't believe any man would leave his wife like that. How am I supposed to get home? Ask one of your boyfriends. Offer them a blowjob or a fuck for a ride home. Oh, they already got that, didn't they? Jim, I'm sorry. It was a mistake, I drank too much. I didn't mean for that to happen. They took advantage of me when you left the party. They were going to walk me to my room but took me to theirs instead. First, I didn't leave the party. I went to the restroom and when I returned you had left with your old boyfriend. It took me a while to find out where you were. As far as them taking advantage of you I'll come and get you if you file rape charges against them. Have them arrested, otherwise I'll have to say you were totally willing and our marriage is over. I knew our marriage was over anyway, but I wanted to see what Marianne would say. I can't file charges against them. Everyone will know I was raped. Yeah, right. You were totally willing and now have remorse. By the way, I'm filing for divorce tomorrow on the grounds of adultery. You everybody will know anyway. You can have the apartment. Me and a couple of my friends are moving out my stuff. Have a good life. I hung up. She did get home that evening. Her sister Kathy drove her home. I got a storage locker for most of my stuff and got a room that rents by the week. I didn't need much. I went into the lumberyard on Monday and quit my job. Mary Ann didn't show up for work that day. I'm not sure why but it made it a lot easier for me. I told my boss I was moving out of state and gave him a local post office box number to send my final checks and my savings plan that I cashed in. I had my pickup truck that was paid for and went to the bank and took half of the money out of our savings account. I had our checkbook and paid off the balance of our credit card, at least the one that had my name on it. I was pretty much out of any debt that I helped incur. I left the checkbook at the bank and told them to give it to Marianne when she came in. For the next few days I tried to formulate some kind of plan. After receiving my money I had $2,000 for my part of our savings and checking. I would be getting $15,000 in a week from my job savings and another $2,000 from my last paycheck and vacation pay. I did contact a lawyer and filed for a divorce. 
He told me I needed names and proof if I were going to use adultery for divorce. My other option was a dissolution, but I wanted everyone to know the whore that Marianne was. The lawyer went ahead and sent Marianne the papers. He mentioned to her that I didn't want to speak to her and if she had any questions to contact him. I did buy a cell phone and gave my mom the number as well as the lawyer. I knew that there was a lumberyard in West Virginia, just across the Ohio border. I had met the owner a few times when he came to a few lumber company meetings. He told me if I ever wanted a job to look him up. I never thought I would be taking him up on it. I had a meeting with him and said I needed a job and explained that I was getting a divorce and that my wife worked for my old company. He promised not to tell my ex-employer that I was working for him and I could start the following Monday. I found myself a trailer for sale pretty cheap. It was set up in a trailer park. I picked up my stuff out of storage and moved in. Luckily it had a lot of furniture in it, so I didn't have to go buy a lot of things. I stopped by a Bob Evans restaurant outside of Steubenville and couldn't believe my waitress was Kathy, my soon-to-be ex-sister-in-law. She looked mad when she saw me. Why did you leave Marianne? She said you were mad because she danced with her old boyfriends and left her at the wedding. Then when she went to your room you had left her stranded with no way to get home. I took her home the next morning and you had moved out. How could you do such a thing? I never thought you were like that, she said. Most of what you said isn't true. I don't have time to explain the whole story. If you want to know the truth, give me a call and we can meet and I'll tell you the truth. Your sister is a lying cheating slut. I know Kathy was surprised when I called her sister a cheating slut. I never talked that way around Kathy. I gave her my phone number and asked one favor of her, and that was to not give that phone number to Marianne. For some reason I felt I could trust Kathy. I ate breakfast and headed over to my new job. The only people that knew where I was working was Kathy and my lawyer. It was funny that I was only 15 miles from Mary Ann's hometown of Steubenville. I was surprised that I did get a call from Kathy the following day. She worked mornings at the restaurant and went to college in the afternoon. She was taking courses in nursing and was just about finished. She had about a half year to go. She agreed to meet me for dinner at a restaurant in West Virginia after she got out of classes. She told me she wanted the truth and didn't feel she was getting it from Mary Ann. Needless to say, Mary Ann had everyone else convinced it was my jealousy that broke up our marriage. My job at the lumberyard was hard work, but kept me physically fit. I got all the exercise I needed. Some days I went out and had a few beers with some of my fellow workers. I would usually get something to eat and then to bed to get some rest. I kept in touch with my lawyer, and he told me he needed the names and addresses of the men who had sex with Mary Ann. All I knew was their first names, Ben, Tony and Rob. I hoped that Kathy might help me out. When we met for dinner she wasn't in the best mood. She heard from Mary Ann that I was trying to divorce her on the grounds of adultery, and Mary Ann said they were unfounded. We ordered dinner and I told Kathy that I would be totally honest with her. I had no reason to lie. As we were eating I told her about the way that Mary Ann acted at the wedding. She did say she thought that Mary Ann was overdoing the flirting, and Mary Ann admitted to it. Then I told her the rest of the story. I mentioned that I went to the restroom and when I came out Mary Ann was gone, and so was her friend Rob. I let her know that I talked to Tony and Ben, and they said that Rob took Mary Ann up to her room, but when I got there she wasn't there. I went into detail about finding her in Rob's room with his friends. How she was having sex with them and didn't even know I was there. How could you just sit there and watch them having sex with Mary Ann? I can't believe you just sat there and did nothing. I guess I just froze when I first saw her. Then she was begging them to continue. Tony had a knife and he did tell me it was three against one. I would have probably fought them anyway if Mary Ann was being raped, but the sex with these three assholes was consensual. When Mary Ann turned around and saw me she asked them to stop. She told me she made a mistake. I called her slut wife and that I would be getting a divorce. I went back to her room, got my things and went home. I was gone when you dropped her off at home the next day. I swear to God it's the absolute truth. I would never lie to you. I care for you too much. I even mentioned to Mary Ann that if she filed rape charges against them that I would come pick her up at the motel. She told me she couldn't do that. Kathy stared at me for what seemed like the longest time. I believed that she could see the truth in my eyes. That's when I asked her for a favor. Kathy, I need the last names and addresses of Rob, Tony and Ben. Would you be able to get them for me? She looked at me, and then away for a few seconds. What do you want with them? She asked. I need them in in my divorce statement. I'm getting the divorce on grounds of adultery. My lawyer told me that I need that information. Can you get it for me? Do you know what you're asking? Mary Ann is my sister and you want me to betray her and side with you. No, that's not true. 
All I'm asking for is the full names and addresses of the men who had sex with my wife. You can't betray her if she didn't do anything wrong, can you? I know you well enough that you know I'm telling the truth. Kathy, I can still find out the information if you don't want to help me. It would just be faster since I know you already know their names. I guess more than anything I want us to stay friends. Okay, I'll get you what you want. I have to tell you that I don't know if I totally believe you. Stop on Thursday, that's when I work again and I'll have it for you. Thursday before work I stopped in the restaurant and asked to be seated in Kathy's section. I thought I saw her smile when she looked my way. When she came to my table she slipped me a folded piece of paper, and I put it in my pocket. I thanked her and ordered breakfast. I saw my lawyer after work and gave him a copy of the information I picked up. He told me that Marianne had called him and said she wasn't going to sign the papers if it said divorce because of adultery. However, if we had a dissolution due to irreconcilable differences, she would agree to that. It had something to do with ruining her reputation. My lawyer told me that was my best option. The problem was that there was no proof to the allegation I was charging her with in the divorce. I didn't have any other witnesses other than myself, and the three men surely wouldn't admit to having sex with Marianne. No video, no pictures, nothing to prove it happened. It was just my word against hers. I went along with the lawyer and applied for a dissolution. He said it would be finalized in about four months. I then got more bad news. Since I was on the lease and it would have to be renewed again in two months, I would have to pay half the rent for the next two months, then I could be removed from the rental agreement after that. At least I would rid myself of the lying bitch. The only problem was my need for some type of revenge. I was made a cuckold and sat there and took it. Looking back I should have just walked out instead of watching Mary Ann and listening to her telling them how good it felt. Now I also remember Rob asking her if it was as good as it used to be. I remembered feeling sad when she said yes. Now, Mary Ann gets away with being the one that people believed. I'm just considered a jealous husband. My lawyer and Kathy are the only two I told the whole truth to. I figured it would all come out in the divorce, but now it was just a dissolution. I did tell my friends and the guys that I work with that my wife cheated on me, but didn't give any details. It was bad enough that I was a cuckold, let alone that I stayed and watched it happen. In the following months I worked and would stop and see Kathy at the restaurant every chance I got. She gave me her work schedule and I ate there as she was working. It was an extra 15 miles to drive, but I didn't care. I asked her out and she told me she would love to go out with me, but not until after the divorce. No one in her family knew that we were seeing each other, even though it was only to work. One day she looked sad when I came in. When I asked her what was wrong she told me that Marianne was dating Rob again. It's only been two months since the two of you separated and she's already back with him. I thought Rob was married. He is. I went to see her one day and he was at your old apartment. When she came to the door I could see what they had been doing. All she had on was a robe and her hair was a mess. He was buttoning his shirt coming out of the bedroom. I didn't even go in after seeing them. I called her slut and told her that she didn't deserve you. All she said was don't tell mom and dad. I left knowing that everything you told me was probably true. I'm sorry for doubting you. It had now been over three and a half months since I applied for the divorce. I got a call from Kathy telling me she needed to see me. We met after she got out of class one evening. I was just happy to see her. We met in a lounge outside of the city. We sat in a booth and ordered a drink. Okay, what's up? I asked. You seemed very nervous on the phone. Mary Ann's pregnant. I heard her tell mom last night. She told mom that you're the father. That's bullshit. We haven't been together for over five months. How far along is she? She told mom around three and a half months. It must have happened about the time you left her. Are you sure it can't possibly be yours? I'm positive but it's going to mess up my dissolution. Damn that bitch. I'm sorry, I know she's your sister, but I hate her for what she has done. All I can say is I married the wrong sister. What? Asked Kathy. If Mary Ann hadn't gotten pregnant I would not have married her. You see, I had a crush on you, but I wanted to do what was right by Mary Ann, and we got married. I know now that she never loved me, but I put in a real effort. Now I have to wonder if the first baby was even mine to begin with, knowing she was sleeping around. Kathy didn't say anything. I think she was a bit shocked. Then she said, why didn't you ever say anything to me? Asked Kathy. What good would it have done? I thought it best to just hold it in. Besides, I didn't know how you felt and nothing would have changed, but everything would have been very uncomfortable for both of us. I wanted to make my marriage work, but I guess your sister had other ideas. I'm sorry, I really am. I let you too and thought of how lucky Marianne was. Jim, I have to leave now.
Please don't let anyone know I told you about Marianne. I just thought you should know. I'm sure she'll bring it up in a couple weeks at your dissolution hearing. I can't see you before that except if you come into the restaurant. She got up to leave and gave me a hug. I saw tears in her eyes. She gave me a piece of paper, which was her work schedule for the next month. Maybe she wanted to see me after all. I knew it must be hard on her knowing how Marianne was lying to her parents, or that she hadn't told anyone that she and I had been in communication. I did stop by for breakfast whenever I knew she was there. We only had a few minutes to talk, but it was always nice seeing her. I did get a call from my lawyer about our appearance in court. He mentioned that my wife said she was pregnant and was asking for support. She was at the closing of the dissolution with her attorney. I told them we had agreed to our settlement and it was already done. I wasn't paying anything more. I did tell her attorney that the baby wasn't mine, and I wasn't giving her anything. Mary Ann had health coverage from her job, so it would cover most of the costs of the baby. I knew the baby wasn't mine so I came up with an idea. I told her attorney I would sign an addendum to the dissolution form, that if a child was mine, that I would pay half of any medical bills that would occur as well as child support, till the child was 18. I would also pay for a DNA test at the baby's birth. If the child wasn't mine she would get nothing from me. She yelled at me, but her attorney said it was a fair offer, and she should take it. We signed the addendum and my marriage was over. After signing the final papers I looked over at Mary Ann with disdain and said, By the way, I know you're still sleeping with your old boyfriend Rob. You might want to tell him he's going to be a daddy. She looked at me with one of those, how do you know that? Looks. I just walked out a free man, but in my gut I knew that really wasn't much revenge. I still needed it, real revenge. Now it was time to make a few plans. I often thought that maybe I should just let it all go and go on with my life, but my inner feeling wouldn't let that happen. It constantly nudged at my insides. The next time I saw Kathy I mentioned that I told Mary Ann that I knew she was sleeping with Rob, and she might want to tell him he's going to be a father. God, Jim. You didn't tell her I told you did you? No, I just blurted it out. No one except the guys at work know I even come here to see you. I am divorced now so can we get together? Jim, this is a very busy time for me. I'm working plus I have my school and finals coming up. I'm graduating with a nursing degree in a few months. Then there is a the big problem of dealing with my family. They still blame you for the divorce and getting Marianne pregnant again. Maybe if I talked with them they might understand differently. Someday maybe, but this isn't the best time. I'm not avoiding you, in fact I want to be with you, but the time has to be right. Please try and understand. Due to her work schedule and schooling, I could only see her twice a week for breakfast. I told her I could wait as long as she needed me to. I was able to get a little information on the scumbags that had sex with Marianne. I decided to start getting even. I knew that the three assholes didn't always hang out together. Once in a while they went to a bar across from the steel mill after work. I had their home addresses thanks to Kathy. She had no idea I was going to use it for revenge. I decided to start with Tony. He would be the one least expecting it. I started my revenge with Tony who was the black guy that had sex with Marianne. He held a knife on me and I sat there and took it, watching my wife have sex and him laughing at me. I followed him a couple of times to a bar near where he lived. I always kept my distance and never went in. It was pretty much a mixed bar but predominantly black. Tony would often go there on Saturday nights and once in a while during the week and stay for an hour or so. He would ride his motorcycle and park it in the back so no one would mess with it. It was late on a Wednesday night that I followed him to the bar. It was a pretty light night for bars since it was a weeknight. It was a dreary dark night and not much was happening. I waited an hour and was parked in a lot next to the bar. It was near midnight when he came out. I looked all around and didn't see anyone. I put a mask over my face. Kind of like a cold weather mask. I took my ball bat and went up behind him. He didn't hear me due to starting his cycle. I swung the bat and caught him across the small of the back. I swung two more times hitting his arms, which he raised to protect his head. He did have his helmet on but still got his bell ring. I swung one last time and caught him in the ribs. He never had a chance to retaliate or see who I was. He fell off his bike, which stopped running as he fell to the pavement in utter pain. He seemed to be conscious but barely. I headed back to my truck and went home. I guess I was lucky that no one had seen me. It was a stupid thing to do, but sometimes we all do things we shouldn't. It was in the papers the next day that a man was beaten behind the bar. They had no witnesses and no suspects. There was no one that would think I was involved, seeing it was nearly five months ago that he fucked my ex-wife, and it was never mentioned in court. Maybe this dissolution turned out better for me. 
I would have liked for Tony to have known it was me, but that would have caused a whole new set of problems up the road. The next time I had stopped in for breakfast Kathy asked me if I read about Tony getting beat up. I told her I had but I didn't know much about the area. I'm happy he got his payback. Probably was some other husband getting even with him, I said. Kathy stared at me but never asked me if I was involved. The problem would have been that I wouldn't have wanted to lie to her. I did get some satisfaction from beating him. Too bad he didn't know it was me. But again that could present some long term problems. He was in the hospital for a week with multiple bruises and fractures. He would be out of work for a month. According to the reports he had no idea who it was because the person was wearing a mask. He didn't even know if his attacker was black or white. Good thing I wore gloves. It was now time to go after Rob. He was married so I figured the revenge might be a little easier to attain. I knew that on Saturdays he usually went to see Marianne, thanks to the information I got from Kathy. I figured he told his wife that he was working or out with his friends. That way he had the whole day to be with Marianne. Around noon on Saturday I went to his house. I knew his wife was named Sheila and was in the same graduating class as Rob and Marianne. I knocked on the door and a nice looking lady answered. I could see two small children yelling and playing in the living room. Can I help you? Asked Sheila. My name is Jim Holder. I'm not quite sure how to say this to you. Your husband is having sex with my ex-wife. What? Who are you, again? Who's your wife? Why are you telling me this? I'm Jim Holder. My ex-wife is Mary Ann Jennings Holder. She was in your high school. I know who the hell she is. The fucking bitch. How do you know Rob is fucking her? She came out on the porch and closed the door so her kids couldn't hear. We were at a wedding a few months ago and I caught them having sex. I didn't know if it was a one-time thing at the time, but after hearing she had been with him before, I divorced her. Now I find out she has been with him before we were even married and never stopped having sex with him. Now she is pregnant and I believe Rob is the father. I know for sure that I'm not. Why should I believe you? I don't even know you and you come to my house while my husband is at work and accuse him of screwing his old girlfriend. Sounds like you just want revenge. I do want revenge, but it is the truth. Your husband isn't at work today. He's with Mary Ann at her apartment 40 miles away. He goes there most every week. I can prove it to you. How are you going to do that? I'll call Mary Ann and ask to speak to Rob. Then, I'll hand you the phone. Do you know of any reason why he should be there? Hell no. Wait here while I get the phone. She went inside and brought her phone out. I noticed it was a speaker phone and told her I would use it so she could hear the entire conversation. I dialed my old number and Mary Ann answered the phone. Mary Ann this is Jim. What the hell do you want, you fucking wimp? Said Mary Ann. I know your lover Rob is there and I need to say something to him. Put him on. He's not here. You lying slut. I can hear him in the background talking. Hand him the damn phone. She handed Rob the phone and I gave Sheila her phone. What the fuck do you want, you fucking pervert? Want to watch me fuck your ex-wife again? He started laughing. Sheila yelled, you fucking bastard. So you're back sleeping with your slut whore again. Well I have news for you, you bastard. You can just stay there, we're through. Just to get even with your cheating ass, I'm going to fuck Jim. Two can play this game. Rob mumbled a bunch of shit that didn't make much sense. He was trying to make excuses, but Sheila told him to go to hell, that he was a lying cheating bastard, and she was getting a divorce. After she hung up she told me she had no intention of having sex with me. She just said it to get even with Rob. She was a mother and had two children to raise. Between her job and the alimony she would get from Rob, she would do quite well. She actually thanked me for telling her the truth. If Rob should ever ask me if I had sex with her I was welcome to say yes, but in court for the divorce she would be telling the truth. I did tell her she needed me as a witness in her divorce case, that I would be willing to testify. I left feeling both good and bad. I got revenge on Rob, but I hurt Sheila and broke up her marriage. She did tell me she thought he had been cheating on her, but never had the evidence on who it might be with. I had to wonder why Rob would have a fling with Marianne with a nice looking woman like Sheila and two kids at home that cared for him. Some guys are just born assholes and because some were school athletes they still think they're studs. Guys like Rob needed to grow up. Sheila did kick his ass out. He couldn't stay with Marianne because it was too far away from his work. When Kathy found out about it she wasn't mad at me. If anything she said her sister deserved it. Her parents were surprised that Rob had cheated on his wife with Marianne. Rob moved in temporarily with Ben and his mother. Ben was divorced a couple of years back. His wife left him for another man. He moved back in with his mother. I did find out that his mom was divorced when Ben was a teenager. 
she pretty much raised him alone. I guess a lot of us were raised by a single parent. She was a bartender at a neighborhood bar. She had asked Ben not to be a customer there because it made her feel uncomfortable watching him drink the way his father did. She didn't have a problem with Rob moving in temporarily till he could find a place. In case you're wondering I got most of my information with small talks with Kathy when I stopped in for breakfast. Marianne was getting bigger and would be having her baby in another month or so. According to Kathy, Rob wasn't the kind of guy that could take care of himself. He needed a woman to take care of him. Kathy said that Marianne came to visit her parents one weekend and brought Rob along. According to Kathy, Rob used his razzle-dazzle to explain that he and Sheila had been on the outs for quite some time. When he saw Marianne at the wedding he remembered how much he cared for her. He began seeing her after I filed for divorce. Damn, he could lie. They became close friends again, and now he asked her to marry him. He knew she was going through a lot, and they would wait till after the baby was born, and his divorce was final. They figured they would find a place near Steubenville to live so Marianne and the baby would be near her parents. He got a promotion at the mill so Marianne wouldn't have to work if she didn't want to. He did say he would be a good father to the baby, even though it was mine. Marianne's parents accepted him, lock, stock and barrel. Kathy said she couldn't believe all the bullshit the two of them put out. She did her best not to say anything, and would just bide her time till school was out. If you haven't figured it out by now, Marianne was always their favorite. In their eyes she could do no wrong. Needless to say, Kathy and Marianne were pretty much opposites. I wanted to be with Kathy, but she was so busy with working at the restaurant, taking her nursing classes, and also helping out at the hospital as a nurse's aide. Maybe our time would come, she always told me. I went into the bar with four of my friends after work. I couldn't believe it when I saw Rob and Ben sitting there. I didn't know whether to avoid them or confront them. I didn't have much choice, when Rob said hey Jim. I'm fucking your old lady again. You fucked up my marriage, but I still have your ex to fuck. They started laughing. So you're fucking a pregnant cunt who was willing to give out to your friends. Aren't you the lucky one? What do you say you and I step outside and settle this little shouting match? Or, are you afraid of going one-on-one? -on -one? Right. There were only two of us and four of you, evenly matched, he laughed. The minute I beat your ass they'll all jump in. You mean the way you had it three to one at the wedding? She fucking asked for it and you know it. By the way, you stay the fuck away from Sheila and my kids if you know what's good for you. I don't need a ready-made family. I'll let you support them. I do have to say that Sheila is one fucking nice woman, not like the slut I was married to. Looks to me that you hooked your horse up to the wrong wagon. My friends and I went over and got a booth and had a few beers. I could see Rob and Ben talking and would like to jump my ass, but I was with three other guys. I would gladly take on either one as long as it was one on one. I went up and got us some more beers, and I heard Ben call me a cuckold on the way back. I looked at him and said, you're next on my list. I know they had to wonder if it was me that beat up Tony months ago, but there was absolutely no proof. Ben did say, hey man, I got no wife or sisters to fuck. No marriage to mess up. What you gonna do, fuck my old lady? He laughed. I headed back to my table, but I do have to admit that Ben's idea wasn't without merit. My buddies and I left the bar without incident. They did tell me that they would have my back if I ever needed them. The following Saturday night I went by myself to a bar I'd never been to before. It was a small neighborhood bar with about a dozen customers. Everyone looked at me, seeing they probably knew everyone who ever came into the place. I sat at the end of the bar and ordered a beer. The bartender was Ben's mother. She was probably in her late 40s and was beginning to show her age. She had a few visible tattoos. After setting down my beer she asked me if I wanted anything else. It was after midnight, but I asked her if it was possible to get anything to eat. The cook's gone, but I could rustle you up a ham sandwich if you like. I told her that would be great. I hadn't eaten most of the day. She served the other customers and went back and made my sandwich. It had ham, mayo, lettuce, tomato and cheese. I got a bag of chips to eat with it. Within the hour most of the customers had left. There were two couples still sitting in the booth. Helen was cleaning off the bar and came over to talk to me. You're new here. Where are you from? I recently got divorced and moved to West Virginia. I work in the lumber yard. I was riding through town and saw this place and decided to get a beer and a bite to eat. I'm Helen. I've been here for 15 years. We don't get many young guys here. They usually want to pick up some young chick, and we don't get many of those, she smiled. We're just a small town community bar. I could use that too, I laughed. It's been a while since the divorce. I smiled at Helen. She wasn't a bad looking woman. She wore a low cut blouse that showed some nice cleavage. 
She wasn't overweight, in fact she was on the thinner side. I began kidding with her and she was flirting back. We talked for a while, and she told me her son moved back in with her, and now has his asshole friend living with him for a few months. She said he was getting a divorce also. Must be something in the water, she said and smiled. My ex did a gangbang and I caught her in the middle of it. I walk out never to return, I replied. Damn, honey. Sorry to hear that. We continued talking. Helen was nice and personable. I decided to go for it. Helen, what are you doing after work? What? Are you really trying to pick me up? She smiled. Honey, I'm old enough to be your mother. Mothers like sex too. I'm just passing through and we'll probably never see each other again. After smiling, she walked away and took care of the last customers in the booth. She told them it was last call. She came back to the counter. Look, it's been a while for me too since I've been with a young man like you. I have to finish cleaning up and restocking the bar, and then we could go somewhere. I went behind the bar and helped her restock it. She smiled when she saw that I was helping her out. The last couple had left and we finished cleaning up the bar. I mentioned to her that I noticed there was a couch and a small bed in the back. I had seen it when I got stuck from the back room. It's for passed out drunks and the like. Haven't had many lately. I've slept there a few times if I had too much to drink and didn't want to drive home. We went to the room in the back. On the way she shut off two cameras. I asked what they were for, and she told me one for the main bar and the other for the room in back. Can't be too careful anymore. After turning off the camera she said, we don't want to be on video, and she laughed. As she went to freshen up I pulled out the disc she had in the back room video camera and put in a new one and turned it back on. She came out of the restroom and said, let's see what you got, honey. After peaceful and full of love hour, she fell asleep. I covered her with the sheet. I went over to the camera, turned it off and took out the disc and put the old one back in. I left out the back door because it's self-locked. Now it was time to go back and see my old friends Rob and Ben. Things sure change in a hurry. One day everything is going along fine and then at day boom. Everything changes. It was on a Saturday and Kathy was working at Bob Evans. I went and sat in her section. It wasn't as crowded as usual, so we had a chance to talk a little. My feelings for her were strong, but not much I could do about it. As I was ordering my breakfast I saw her look up at another customer. My back was to them and I had no idea who it was. Then I heard a voice, fuck, Kathy, I didn't know they served cuckolds in here. If you need a man, just let me know and I'll fix you up with the real one. No need to whore around with this asshole. I knew the voice, it was Rob. Kathy looked scared but didn't say anything. Everything happened in a flash. I jumped up from my booth, turned around and cold cocked Rob with the right cross. I hit him and he hit the floor. It was then I noticed that Marianne was with him. She had already sat down with her big belly. She was due just about any time I thought. She screamed as I jumped on Rob and hit him again. I looked back and both Marianne and Kathy were crying. I had to wonder who was crying for whom. I was taken off to jail. I called my lawyer and he said that I was going to be arraigned on Monday on the charges of assault. I would be spending Saturday and Sunday in lockup. It wasn't worth posting bail until after the arraignment if the charges stuck. I had plenty of time to think. I had a somewhat fucked up childhood, and then ended up marrying a whore, but was in love with her sister. When you're in jail, you do a lot of thinking about what could have been. I figured Kathy wouldn't be talking to me anymore if I was lucky enough not to serve much time. Maybe somehow, some way I could start over, but I would prefer to do it with Kathy. I couldn't get her out of my mind, and I've never even kissed her like you would a girlfriend. I was arraigned first thing Monday morning. I did call into work to let them know I wouldn't be there on Monday and why. I was to call my boss after the arraignment so he would know when I might be coming back. I figured if I had to do some real time, like months, I'd lose my job. It was a small courtroom with a judge and a witness stand. On one side was Rob with his face bruised and his mouth wired up. Sitting next to him was Mary Ann staring darts at me. Behind them was Mr. and Mrs. Jennings, Mary Ann and Kathy's parents. More darts were coming my way. On my side was me and my lawyer. I wondered why Kathy wasn't there. She was a prime witness to what really happened. Other people who were there was the two patrolmen who arrested me. We hadn't said two words the whole time I was in the cruiser, except they talked about me ruining their breakfast. There were a few of the courtroom people, but I really didn't know their positions. I'd never been in court before but the one time from my divorce dissolution hearing. The judge began by saying this was an arraignment whether I would be charged with assault and have a criminal trial. The atmosphere was a little lighter, but that he still ran a strict courtroom. He spoke to my lawyer. Mr. Williams, you said that you have a witness that could explain this whole mess your client finds himself in. 
Since Mr. Rob Avery isn't able to speak I would like to hear from this witness. Kathy came walking into the courtroom. Everyone seemed a bit shocked that she was there. She didn't look at me or her parents, but went right to the witness chair. The clerk or some lady who was wearing a uniform swore her in. Miss Jennings, would you tell us exactly what you observed on the morning in question? Asked the judge. Well sir, I'm a waitress at the restaurant. Jim, that's Mr. Holder there, comes in regularly and usually sits in my section as he did that morning. As we were talking I saw Rob Avery and my sister Mary Ann come in, and they started toward my section. So the woman next to Mr. Avery is your sister, I presume? Said the judge. Yes, and Mr. Avery is her fiancé. They're to be married in a couple of months. I could see Kathy was really nervous. I felt so sorry for her, I wanted to hold her. Go on Miss Jennings, what did you observe? Jim's back was to Mr. Avery. He never saw who it was till he turned around. I'm sure he knew his voice when he heard him. What did you hear Mr. Avery say to the defendant? He actually said it more to me than he did to Jim. I think that was what got Jim so mad. Jim has been called names by Rob a lot of times, but this time he called me names as well as Jim and Jim retaliated by hitting him. He did more than just hit him, he broke his jaw. What did he say? Asked the judge. He called Jim a cuckold and told me that if I wanted to whore around he would find me a real man, not one that lets other men fuck his wife. I looked over at the Jennings and they didn't seem very happy. Mary Ann just looked down. Kathy continued, Jim jumped up, turned around and saw Rob. He went down and Jim called him an asshole and hit him again. I yelled for Jim to stop and he did. That's when the officers came over and arrested Jim and called the paramedics to help rob Mr. Avery there. The judge thought for a moment and asked Kathy what brought all this on. Why did Mr. Avery call Mr. Holder cuckold? This seems to be the basis of the case. Do you any idea why, Miss Jennings? Yes sir, Jim told me. It all started at my cousin's wedding nearly nine months ago. Jim said that he saw my sister, Mary Ann, having having sex with three men. He said it was consensual. Mary Ann stood up and said it wasn't true. Mrs. Holder, what part isn't true? Did you or did you not have sex that night with someone other than your husband? Mary Ann just started crying and sat down. The judge didn't wait for an answer. The judge asked Rob to stand up. Mr. Avery, I know it's hard for you to talk, but all you have to do is nod your head. Remember you are in a court of law, you're under oath, and if you perjure yourself you could be arrested. On the night in question did you have sexual relations with Mrs. Holder? Rob nodded, yes. The judge said the record should reflect Mr. Avery's affirmative response. Did anyone else also have relations that same night with Mrs. Holder? Rob looked over at Mary Ann and then back at the judge, and again Rob nodded yeses. And the judge said the same thing about the record. Mr. and Mrs. Jennings went to get up to leave the courtroom, but the judge told them to stay seated till the hearing was over. Thank you Miss Jennings, you've been most helpful. You may be seated. She wasn't sure where to sit so she sat with her parents. They didn't look very happy with her testimony. He did ask the officers if there was anything they could add, and they said they just did what Miss Jennings stated. They called the ambulance for Mr. Avery, and helped the pregnant Mrs. Jennings to her vehicle. They did say that I didn't speak the whole time I was in the cruiser. The judge then asked Mary Ann if she had anything she wanted to say. After all it was a hearing whether to drop the charge against me or charge me with assault. Mary Ann said that she had nothing to add. She did say she was sorry for what happened but didn't elaborate. The judge spoke. He asked Rob to stand. Mr. Avery, it seems that this incident was caused by you badgering the defendant who retaliated in kind. I'm not saying that he is not responsible for your medical bills. As I understand it, you have insurance, and it paid all but $200 of your expenses. Is that correct? Rob nodded, yes. Mr. Holder, please stand, said the judge. I understand your retaliation, but you can't go around hitting people because you don't like what they say about you or your girlfriend. I thought even the judge knew I cared for Kathy. You are responsible for Mr. Avery's unpaid medical bills in the amount of $200. You must pay it within one week. I'm putting you on six months probation for fighting in a public place. If you come to my courtroom again and are caught fighting, or otherwise disturbing the peace, you will serve the balance of the six months, plus any other sentence for anything else you do. Is that understood? Yes, judge, thank you. I'll do my best to stay out of trouble. Rob and Mary Ann left the courtroom madder than when they came in. Kathy told her parents that she was brought up by them to always tell the truth, and that is what she did. She never told them about Mary Ann because she asked her not to. Besides there was no proof except for me, and they would never believe me over Mary Ann. They turned around and looked at me. 
Kathy smiled, but the Jennings looked furious and walked out of the courtroom. A lawyer and I walked out and he told me to keep my nose clean. He also said I owed Kathy big time. I knew there was no doubt there. I called my boss and told him I would be at work on Tuesday. He seemed happy that he didn't have to fire me. I worked the rest of the week. I couldn't get my mind off thinking about Kathy. I didn't have her cell phone number and I wouldn't dare call the Jennings house. I wasn't allowed back in the restaurant due to the fight. So I didn't get to see her. I did pull into the restaurant and saw her through the windows. She looked out at me but then went back to work. On Saturday I went to the bar by myself. I saw Ben there was some guy I didn't know. Ben knew what happened to Rob but didn't say anything. I tossed down the disc and told him it was a movie for him to watch. I suggested he not watch it with anyone else around, including his mother. He gave me a weird look and took the disc. The following weekend I was back in the bar with a couple of friends. Ben was there with a couple of buddies also. He asked to speak to me privately. He didn't seem very happy, I also had to remember I couldn't afford to get in any fights. Ben and I stepped outside. You fuck my mother, you asshole. What the fuck is the matter with you? Listen Ben, it was your idea. You said, I'm not married. I got no girlfriend, no sister, what the fuck are you going to do? Fuck my old lady. Then you laughed at me. I did go see your mom and she's a nice but lonely person. We spent some time together as you saw. There are two copies of that disc. You have the one and I have the other. Mine will stay buried and probably never be seen again unless you pull some more shit on me. Remember this all started because you fucked my wife before she was my ex. So do we call it a truce or do we get into it till one of us is in the hospital? Or in jail? I asked. You promise never to be with my mom again? I can't take that, replied Ben. Ben, she called me honey. She doesn't even know my name. It was a one-time thing for the both of us. So do we have a truce? No more name calling. Okay, said Ben. The first beer's on me. We went inside and we all had a few beers together. Back on Mary Ann's home front, she had Rob living with her. He would be off for at least two months. He figured he would live with her since Ben's mother kind of wanted him out. Mary Ann had her hands full. Rob wasn't the best homebody and really wasn't much help. The following week I had just got home from work when my phone rang. I couldn't believe it when I heard Kathy's voice on the other end. Jim, I have a few things to tell you. Do you have a few minutes? For you I have all night. I didn't know if you would ever talk to me again. I'm sorry you had to testify at my hearing. I know it was hard for you. If it wasn't for you I'd probably be in jail right now. Jim, I volunteered to testify on your behalf. All I did was tell the truth. My parents were mad at first, but they realized I did the right thing after all. So, what do you need to tell me? Mary Ann had her baby this morning. It's a cute little boy. I don't think they are going to need your DNA because the little fellow is of black descent. What? So do you think it was Tony's? I asked. What did Rob say? I take it he was there. Yes, he was here and when he saw the baby was black he left the hospital. He said he wasn't going to father a black kid. He thought the baby was his, that's why he was going to marry Mary Ann. He told my parents on the way out that the wedding was off. So is Mary Ann going to have Tony tested? I asked. She said maybe. To be honest, I don't think she's sure Tony is the father either. She hasn't said either way. Mom and dad are really pissed at her, but they won't take it out on the baby. They know it wasn't his fault and it's their first grandchild. They would have preferred him to be white, but not much they can do about that. I think you're looking a lot better to them than Rob does. They don't want him back in their house. Anything else new? You know like me seeing you. I graduate next week. Want an invitation? Sure, I'll be there. You know my address, just send it to me. You can pick it up at the restaurant on Wednesday. I work that day. Kathy, I've been banned from that Bob Evans. I don't need to get arrested. I talked to the owner. I told him the story and that you were protecting me. Even the two cops told him that Rob instigated the whole thing. I saw you watching me from outside the restaurant but never came in. So, will I see you Wednesday morning? It's my last day at the restaurant. I graduate on Sunday and then have a week off till I start work full time at the hospital. Five days a week in the maternity ward. Okay, I'll trust you and come to the restaurant. I hope I don't get locked up. Then I'd miss the graduation. I did show up at the restaurant and she gave me one ticket to the graduation and a schedule of when the nursing graduates would be getting their diplomas. In some of the larger colleges they would have over a thousand graduates and they had a particular time frame for the different degrees. The parking lot was so full they actually bus people to the stadium where the ceremonies were held. 
I arrived at the appointed time and went up in the stands. I couldn't believe there were so many graduates. They were wearing one of three colored robes. Kathy did tell me she would be wearing a white one. I have to admit that didn't narrow it down much. I couldn't believe that in a stadium that big that when I looked over in the next section one saw Mr. and Mrs. Jennings. Also sitting with them was Mary Ann with a baby in like a big basket. I later found out that Kathy's parents informed Mary Ann that she would attend her sister's graduation. I was there, but how would I ever know which graduate was Kathy? When they got to the nursing curriculum a large number of students stood up and lined up to take their walk across the stage and get their degree. Thank goodness for the loudspeakers. They would announce each name. When some names were called you could hear someone yell out thing like Go Barb, or Right on Brad. You could tell these visitors were proud of their graduates. They were in alphabetical order so I started listening close when they got to the J's. Then I heard it. Kathy Elizabeth Jennings. I couldn't help it, I had tears running down my cheeks. I stood up and clapped. I whistled and yelled Go Kathy. Everyone around me was smiling. I looked over at Mr. and Mrs. Jennings. After he saw me cheering for Kathy he stood up as well as his wife and clapped for Kathy also. I was so proud of her. Mary Ann looked at me with a somewhat sad look on her face. After the announcement of names you could go meet your graduate in a designated area. I looked on my program to see where I might be able to see Kathy. The stadium was wall to wall people. I went to the designated area and saw Kathy and her parents hugging. Kathy was crying tears of joy. She even hugged Mary Ann or vice versa. I stood back about 20 feet. I didn't want to interrupt her moment with her family. All of a sudden she looked up and saw me. She smiled and ran to me and gave me a big hug and for the first time ever she kissed me. Tears were still running down her face. She whispered in my ear, I love you Jimmy. Every now and then she would call me Jimmy. I said, I love you too Kathy Elizabeth Jennings. We hugged once more. My parents are throwing me a party and all my friends and relatives are going to be there. Are you coming? I'd love to but I better sit this one out. Not really sure your parents would want me there. I will be there in spirit. We hugged one more time and she went back to her family. I headed home thinking how some people can make you so happy. Kathy was one of those people for me. I figure that was what true love is. You could feel the love of a person just by being with them. When Kathy kissed me, I knew she was the one. The one that completes my life. I stopped at a bar to have a couple of beers. It was funny when I saw Ben there. We talked about nothing in particular. He really wasn't so bad of a guy. I'm happy I didn't beat the crap out of him. After a few beers it was getting late and I headed for home. At least the next day was Sunday and I could sleep in. I thought about Kathy and her graduation party. I really wished I could have been there, but I knew the focus would be on me and possibly Mary Ann instead of on Kathy, where it belonged. It was near midnight when there was a knock on my door. I wondered who would be there at this time of night. I got up, turned on the light and answered the door in my briefs. I opened the door to see who it might be. I peeked around the door and saw Kathy standing there. She had the biggest smile on her face. May I come in? She asked. Of course, but what are you doing here? What about your party? It was fun, but everyone went home and I thought about you. So I grabbed a night bag and thought I'd come see you. You don't mind do you? Mind. I'm so happy to see you. The trailer's a mess, but I wasn't expecting company. Do you have clean sheets on the bed? Asked Kathy. Fairly clean. I changed them two days ago but slept on the couch watching TV. I was really wondering what was going to happen. I'm not stupid, but I never thought Kathy would come here. Jimmy, I might as well say it. I'm in love with you and I want to make love to you. I have to tell you a few things first. My parents know I'm here. They're not overly happy about it, but they said I was old enough to make my own decisions. They also said they realized that Marianne was the problem and not you. I love you Kathy, you know that. Quiet, she then smiled. Let me finish. Mom asked if I was on birth control pills, and I told her I started on them a few months ago when I realized how much I care for you. I also have to tell you I'm a virgin. I've never dated much because most guys want the same thing, and I wanted to save myself for the man I love. Jimmy, you better be sure of your feeling for me because I'm betting the rest of my life on you. I took her in my arms and kissed her. We went into the bedroom and she let me slowly undress her. She was so beautiful. She had nice perky breasts, and she trimmed her pussy neatly with just a patch of hair. I still had on my briefs, but my hard on was pushing hard against them. Let it out before it rips your underwear, said Kathy with a smile. We hugged and kissed standing there in the bedroom, my cock pressing against her belly. She backed up and sat on the end of the bed. I got on my knees and put my mouth against her muff. Oh my. 
I wasn't expecting that, said Kathy. I pushed her back lightly, so she lay on the bed while I began eating her pussy in earnest. I spread her pussy lips and saw her hymen. I licked at it with my tongue, but not enough to break it. Kathy was loving it. Take me Jimmy, make me a woman. I don't want to wait any longer. I stood up and put the head of my cock against her pussy opening. I waited for a few seconds until I heard Kathy say, I'm ready. I pushed my cock in past the head. I heard Kathy scream out and quickly stopped. Well, we're past the hard part. She tried to smile. Give me a few seconds to adjust. Hope you don't mind the blood. I love you Kathy. The last thing I want to do is hurt you. Just let me know when you're ready. Yes, guys. It happened. After her shower she put on some baby doll pajamas. She really looked cute. I went and took a quick shower and joined her on the bed after turning off the lights. It might seem strange, but we cuddled the whole night. I woke up in the same position that I went to sleep in. I was cuddled up to Kathy's backside. I got up and used the bathroom. When I came out Kathy was awake. She used the bathroom and came back to the bed. What's on the agenda for today? I asked Kathy. First, I want you to make love to me again, and then you can take me out for breakfast. I want the world to know that we are officially a couple. After making love we got dressed and went to the Bob Evans where she used to work and sat and had breakfast together. After that she took me to her house and we had a nice talk with her parents. Epilogue. We began dating regularly. We decided that we wouldn't get married for at least a year. She had started her new job and we saw each other at least four times a week. We spoke on the phone most every day. She spent quite a few nights at my trailer. We both were saving money for our future. I got along pretty good with her parents. They even apologized for the way they had treated me in the past. I didn't go to the bar very often, but I did see Ben a few times. He told me that when Tony found out Mary Ann's baby was black he left for parts unknown. No one knew where he went. He wasn't about to take any DNA test. Ben found a girlfriend and has been dating. Rob and Sheila did get divorced, but it wasn't final till after he got a raise. Now he pays even more in child support and alimony. I'm willing to make a bet that he didn't think Marianne was worth it. As for Marianne, she still lives in her apartment 40 miles away. She does have quite a few friends and as of now is raising the baby on her own. Her parents and Kathy do go see her once in a while. She told Kathy that she made a big mistake in cheating on me, and not to make the same mistake. It will never happen, replied Kathy. You see, I really do love him, and someday I do want to have his children. Kathy did tell me that Marianne is dating, but she's not sure if it's serious or not. As for us, life couldn't be much better. And that's the best revenge. And again, thanks to DH here for this story. Incredible guy, incredible story and incredible revenge. Don't forget to subscribe my channel, and watch my own story of cheating wife and why I've started this channel. Love you all, appreciate you all, and see you soon. Cheers.